First and foremost, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for attending the session. Um, I was not expecting to have too many people here. <laughs> so I'm gonna feel a little bit, if I feel a little bit shy, just wait for it. I just need five minutes, okay? The five minutes rule. Uh, today I'm gonna talk a little bit about <clears throat> a single pane of glass on Airflow. And before I get started with the content, I just want to explain a little bit why uh, I've submitted the session. So basically, AstroPython SDK has been helping me a lot over these last months. So basically, I moved away from 5,000 lines of code to 375 lines of code by reducing by AstroPython SDK to do the loading of the processes that I used to have in my company. And then um, we started to see a lot of traction on DBT. A lot of customers asking about if we could incorporate DBT into the airflow. And it was like painful in the beginning, so we're gonna see like it's been pretty painful until uh, someone that is inside of this room and the team, so thank you so much for Astronomer, that brought the Cosmos, uh, Astronomer Cosmos into life. So that helped us like a lot. So we were able to reduce and streamline the DBT processes a lot. And in today's, um, in the way that we do today is that we have a meta, metadata driven approach. So users go submit a JSON and from there we just build the entire DBT process using Astronomer Cosmos. And that's automatic you know, within the data platform. So yeah, just before, just to get a sense a little bit about the audience, my first question is that how many of you are using DBT Core? Just please show of hands. Okay, 30, 40%. And for those who are using it, um, do you know Astronomer Cosmos? Oh, so you're gonna enjoy it. So only 10% of the crowd. That's amazing. So I think you guys are gonna love this project. Uh, so do I. But before we get into the Cosmos and the whole um, architecture diagram, I'd like to speak a little bit about the morning data stack. I think we have seen more and more nowadays that thing getting to traction. Uh, we used to have a bunch of Spark on the processing engine, and then all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but we, really, we started to see that SQL is just becoming not only the lingua franca for SQL analysis, but also to doing data transformations. And DBT is pretty good on that, right? Uh, but that's just one part of the equation in how you transform the data as long as it's inside of your data warehouse. And you know, this modern data approach, I'm, I, I'm gonna be super frank with you, uh, in the very first time that I saw this, just dumping raw data into the data warehouse, I felt like, uh, it's, wow, it's messy. But actually, it makes sense for data analysts because they would like to have uh, the data as fast as possible, and then they could analyze and give you know, results to the business, and that's what matters in the end of the day, right? So we're just trying to make results out of the data. And we have like a couple of pieces here which are interesting because if you're trying to move for something more open source, um, you may stumble across some issues around the process. So that's why I think it would be super interesting to show you about that stack and what we did inside of the company. Today we're, we're running more than 100 plus DAGs per day. We have around 150 gigs per day of data movement and we're doing this I mean, with Airflow and with other, these other components that I'm gonna show you right now. It's super exciting. So we have the ingestion part, which connects with different data sources. Then we have the data warehouse, um, and eventually we plug DBT on top of the data warehouse to do SQL analytics queries. And then of course, we orchestrate this whole thing using Airflow, of course. Um, so for the ingestion part, we are using, I mean, there's a lot of ways to skin the cat. Here, there's a bunch of different toolings out there, but this one pretty much caught my attention and I fell in love with AstroPython SDK as a very first beginning because basically abstracts the complexity of doing transformations and movement. And that's pretty fantastic. I mean, just, I mean, we have people that actually build the project, so thank you so much for you guys um, here uh, uh, at the session. And essentially, it makes a lot easier for us to do ELT and ETL operations. So abstract by using operators, which is the same idea of the Apache Airflow. It's open source and offers you a variety of pre-built operators. So we have around 13, 14, I would say, a little bit more than that. 
okay? Um, and then we can, do, we can do a bunch of stuff. But there's one specifically that I love the most, which is the load file. Load file is fantastic. So, you know, one of the common issues, and I don't know if you guys already faced that problem in Airflow, is that whenever you're moving data, and if you would like to use something inside of Airflow, you're basically moving data, and then you need to load the data into the Airflow executors, right? So what if you could have a better way to optimize and streamline this process? So what if you could have like an operator that not only loads data, but loads data in a native transfer way? So this is pretty fantastic. So, and how, we, how they accomplish this, right? So we have two ways to load. Either you just put the data on the executor and then you process all this data inside of Airflow. We totally don't want to do that. Or we use the native transfers for the cloud-based modern data warehouses. So for example, Snowflake uses Stage. Um, uh, BigQuery uses the transfer, the BigQuery transfer API. So what if could be operator that could allow it to understand and intelligently move the data between the sites? And that's what Astro Python SDK does. If you guys never heard about it, I truly recommend you to take a look on it because it's pretty fantastic software, a uh, piece of, of code, and truly simplifies the complexity of loading data from your data lake to your data warehouse, okay? Second, data warehouse. I mean, I think everybody knows about modern data warehouses here, right? So I'm not, I, I don't want to spend time here, but eventually, I think that either Databricks or Snowflake and all the major cloud data warehouses are leaning towards a more data platform approach where they would like to leverage not only data lineage, but data governance, and also they would like to leverage the whole structure of a modern data stack. And they're doing this by simplifying all these steps. So you could ingest easily, you can query right away the data, and it's pretty affordable and, and, and cheap to have data inside of your modern data warehouse today. And one of our choices was Snowflake. First and foremost, because it works pretty well with DBT, um, and also because um, we are you, you're running multi-cloud approach. So that was the two main drivers for why we decided to, uh, to opt for Snowflake. And that's interesting because now we have to to stop to think a little bit about data lake to spark and writing transformations and then having two different clusters, two different things to do it. And now we are loading data using Astro Python SDK to Snowflake and once data lands into the, the, the Snowflake, I have the fully fledged capability of DBT to run my SQL transformations, right? So DBT is a, is a pretty amazing piece of, uh, of code that allows you to, allows you to write efficient SQL. And you may ask sometimes, why should I use uh, DBT instead of the vanilla SQL inside of the data warehousing system? And well, there's like a lot of reasons why, but the very first one is that it gives you the whole visualization about what is going on inside of your data warehouse instead of you just, just issuing queries against the data warehouse. So it gives you all the lineage, it gives all the benefits to testing. It allows you to have a more software engineering-ish process. So you go through GitHub, just submit your code, you have your approval. And then if you have a LGTM, nobody wants to do that, like it looks good to me. <laughs> you approve the PR, then it should be fun, fine to run your code. But, you know, jokes aside, I have seen a lot of customers uh, requesting DBT nowadays. So can you just give me a quick show of hands if is that true for you as well? Like DBT, have you guys seen a lot of DBT around? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of DBT around as well. Uh, which is interesting because now we are, I don't know if we stop for a second, we've begun SQL analysis, analysis back in 1970s with SQL. And then all the way through history, um, we used to use SQL which to solve our problems, then we stopped to use SQL, people thought would be to use different Python, Scala, Java, whatever. And guess what? Who won the game? <laughs> we are still getting back in SQL, uh, which is fine. So I'm super excited that we can write complex queries and complex um, data transformations using SQL nowadays and DBT really allows that. DBT has something pretty interesting um, in my view, that is the DBT adapters. 
So DBT adapters, I mean, DBT was meant to connect into a modern data warehouse. That was the very first inception of DBT, but later they, they would like to broaden the approach and make sure that you could you know, extend your DBT across your organization. So then they created this concept of adapters. So you can use adapters to leverage DBT and then you can connect into things such as Databricks, for example. So you're still writing your DBT code and then all the complexity is abstracted by the DBT adapter. It's a pretty cool project. There's a bunch of adapters out there, so I truly recommend you to take a look on it. And of course, that for the data orchestration piece, we choose to, to use Airflow. Airflow now is available as a managed solution across the board. Azure, GCP, and the AWS offers a managed solution as, as well as the Astro Cloud. So those are pretty good uh, locations where you can put your airflow and leave the responsibility to the cloud provider or for the company to take care of you, uh, for you. And then you can just only focus and concentrate on your stuff. Um, but what if I would like to use Airflow and DBT Core, right? So DBT has two flavors. First one is DBT Core, which is the open source approach or you have the DBT Cloud, which is a pay subscription uh, per seat basis. Um, and what do you, would you use? If you would like to stay open source, and, and if that makes sense for you, if you always leverage Airflow in your organization, so usually the path to go would be Airf um, DBT Core. But one of the problems that we had through this approach is, is a little bit cumbersome to run DBT inside of Airflow. It used to be pretty painful to do it. And I'm going to show you in the next slide. But I mean, we know that, Py that Airflow is a Python-based approach. We know that it's totally flexible, so it allows you to build anything because you're coding using Python. And also, it's complex, right? So we know that there's a bunch of operators. There is no much patterns around it. So in the way that you connect into a source is not actually how you do on the other one. And you have to understand in a nitty gritty way, the specific things of the operators if you like to make something custom or something better, right? So that's a little bit complex to do it. On the flip side of the coin, you have DBT Core, which is a SQL engine. It's a wrapper that writes SQL and then leverage the modern data warehouse or the adapter to run their queries. So this is a common question about um, where should, it's not where should I use a Spark or DBT, but what is the, what are the main differences? I would say that the main difference is that Spark needs a different cluster, um, whereas the DBT is going to use the computing resources and power of the modern data warehouse or for the adapter that is connect, connected into it. And it's totally like specialized, right? So they have things such as materialized views. You can create lineage pretty easily. You can run your tests. So it's pretty easy uh, to run pipelines. So literally, you can spend, instead of days, you can maybe crunch data in one day, and you can have all your lineage plus the schemas and the testings ready for you, depending on what you're doing. And it's simple, because it's SQL, right? Well, but you know, not everything is flowers, so sometimes it's really hard to make this happen. So in the reality is that, Whenever you, you would like to make DBT Core uh, to run on Apache Airflow, we used to have like not too many options, but I would say two options here. The first one is the Bash operator, which is not a DBT operator, as you can see it. So is there anybody here that already used the Bash operator to do it? It's so amazing, right? Uh, yeah, it, it works, it does the job, but it, to change it, to test, right? and it's not native way in how DBT works. You could ask Bash operator, and then you can run your seeds, your models, you can run your tests on it, or you have the Kubernetes pod operator, which is fantastic as well, but also requires you to dockerize your application, <clears throat> to configure the pod, the scalability on Kubernetes, so it gives you an extra steps. And 
if you would like to run several different tasks, you, you usually would, would leverage different batch operators for that. So the question stands um, about how we make this better, right? And I think Cosmos is the answer for that. Cosmos is, it's open source first. It's developed uh, by a lot of good and great intelligent engineers. Flow in conjunction. And, and that's funny because the first time that I configured that thing uh, was so fast that it was, I was, yeah, am I missing something here? Uh, because it was truly capture all the things that was about to run on DBT and that was super powerful for me. So let's imagine that we have files and then what we use for our solution, we ingest these files from the data lake using Astro Python SDK in a native transfer way. So we guarantee that we're transitioning data not on the executors, instead we are sending that information to the data lake and communicating to the modern data warehouse. So Astro Python SDK does that, so it doesn't load anything inside of the executors. So this is the very first thing that allows us to ingest a truly um, amount of data pretty fast because we're not using our flow just to orchestrate that process. Once data lands into the snowflake, then we start our process to write the SQL transformations on top. So we allow uh, the, the data analysts to query the data and just build this project for you. And then we deploy the project for them automatically. And of course that to make this happen, we use Astronomer Cosmos, which is the library that allows us to see all of this, you know, DBT stuff totally seamless integrated inside of Apache Airflow. And of course, that will straight everything through a batch airflow. Yeah. Okay, so let's see how does it work really quickly here, right? So let's say that you build your DBT project. Let's pick the default JFO shop. Um, and then you can configure profile config. That's, a, that's an interesting thing. So you can set up different profiles or you can rely on Postgres or other configs to put your credentials and your information on it. And then you have your DBT DAG. And that's it. You just put the DBT DAG and then magically it understands everything inside of your DBT project. So it's pretty easy um, and you know, just builds this beautiful image for us so then we can have the same visualization and the same look and feel of the DBT for SQL analysts for, or people that would like to query. So it embeds pretty easily inside of a project. It alters SQL as the first cloud citizen. So it makes it easier for you to write any SQL because it's not that easy to write this without, uh, without Cosmos. You have, all, you leverage the scheduling capabilities of Apache Airflow that's important. So data wearing and uh, timetables and these type of schedulers, they do work on it. And also, uh, it's a it's super far away from you. <laughs> Again, just super close to you. It's just a pip install, Astronomer Cosmos, and then you're set to go. And the last point is about some considerations about if you would like to consider this um, as your process to integrate Apache Airflow and DBT core seamlessly. Um, there's like, Couple of things are interesting to see. First is just, you can customize your deployment using either Docker or Kubernetes. So it's already available on the current Astronomer Cosmos uh, uh, version. You can use different profiles. So let's say for example that you're using, and we use, the, uh, we use Databricks in DBT, and let's say that I would like to store my credentials on Databricks, I can do it. So there's a token capability where I can send and store the data securely on it. I can enable open lineage, so there's like an open English capability ready for you. And this is, this is the holy grail for me. You can literally generate the static docs within the Airflow realm, either using docs S3 operator, Azure, which I feel super happy to see here. And you also have a custom callback that you can use if you have any, any custom thing that you would like to do. And as I said before, if you'd like to leverage the scheduling process of a batch airflow, you're allowed to do it as well. 
So I think I'm just running out of time. Um, yeah, this is the presentation that I, I thought would be interesting to deliver to you guys. I hope you like it. And just please test the Astronomer Cosmos and, and see what you think. I think it's gonna blow your mind. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Luan. Uh, I think we have some time for a couple questions. If anyone has any, uh, just raise your hand and I'll bring a mic to you. If you're okay with that, Luan. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so usually when you execute DBT run, it will uh, take some time to parse all the model and then uh, actually execute the model. So does Cosmo, does in every task, does it use DBT run with a single model? And if so, doesn't that uh, add some time for the execution? I think you have two options. You can leverage the airflow parsing, but also it uses the DBT parsing to make sure that everything's running smoothly. But Tatiana, if you have anything around it. Um, yeah, so at the moment, Cosmos has three modes for parsing a GBT project. It can use the manifest, which is the most lightweight. And then this means during parsing time, we would be spending less time. Um, there is the option of running GBTLS. The advantage of this mode is that then we can benefit from GBT select and exclude using GBT to resolve those. Um, it's a bit heavier, especially if you have a GBT project with thousands of nodes. Um, but for smaller projects, it just gives the closest experience to what GBT would offer. And then there is a custom parser, which is written within Cosmos. Um, it is implemented in Python. And then, yes, manifests would, are the current most efficient way. Thank you. Any other? There we go. Uh, you mentioned that the DBT um, core, or the, in order to integrate um, Airflow and DBT, you use DBT core. Is there a possibility of using DBT, the SAS version, and implement um, with uh, um, integrating with Airflow? Yeah, good question. And yes. whether it's Airflow Astronomer or whether it's Airflow um, non-managed service. Sure, yes. There's a DBT cloud run operator. So you can easily integrate if you still leverage Apache Airflow, and if you like to integrate with DBT Cloud, you have an operator that does that. So just go to Astronomer Registry, DBT, and then you're gonna see the DBT Cloud integration. All right, well, if we don't have any questions, everyone give Lana a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much.